Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of The Real Heroes Show. Corey and Nick with you here. And in this video, we are going to be doing a review and breakdown of the film The Guilty, which is now streaming on Netflix, starring Jake Gyllenhaal. There will be spoilers in this. We're going to go over the story, the performance. Normally, we'd say performances, but it's really a one-man show. Um, some miscellaneous facts. We're going to give it a score and then take this guy home. Nick, how are you today, bud? I am doing well. I can't wait for this weekend. It is going to be jam-packed for me. Whew. Yeah, this busy weekend for you and your personal life, but it's also yeah. a busy weekend television show-wise and movie-wise. We got uh, No Time to Die hits theaters, uh, Ted Lasso season finale, the fourth episode of Foundation. Uh, we have a lot of stuff on our plate, and I think yes. you have a wedding to go to? Yes, I have a wedding to, oh, to attend this weekend. Please. Birthday tell, tomorrow. Tell them to reschedule because... <sighs> watching movies and tv shows and then talking about them on the internet is more important yeah <laughs> it's a way of life come on <laughs> good stuff man so uh let's let's hop right into this uh again spoilers this is on netflix so if you haven't seen it you can go check it out it's a nice tight 90 minute film uh the story is about a demoted cop played by jake gyllenhaal who ends up on 911 patrol he gets a specific, uh, suspicious call and dives into action to the best of his ability, but he can only do so much because he's not allowed out into the field. Uh, he has a tainted past that they get into into the, the tail end of the film. Uh, Nick, I thought this was a lot of fun. How about you? Yeah, I, I thoroughly enjoyed this movie. You know, uh, it did feel a little uh, reminiscent of the movie with um, uh, Kiefer Sutherland and uh, Mr. Colin Farrell. Uh, phone booth, I believe, is the <laughs> name of the movie. Man, I haven't seen phone booth in like 20 years. Yeah, it's been a long time since I've seen it. But again, yeah. where you got this one location, you have a person on the on the on the phone, which you don't ever see. Uh, and of course, you've got the the main protagonist, um, uh, you know, we're calling where it's this time it's Jake, uh, just in the one setting, and that's pretty much all you see and majority of what we hear from. Uh, and there are a couple of bystanders that uh, interact with them, like on like on the street. Whereas this time it's in the like the dispatch office. So, yep. um, and again, I, I know I saw an interview with Jake uh, Gyllenhaal about how long it took to shoot, which was uh, essentially I think he said like I think it was like ten days of shooting. Okay. Uh, so for a ninety minute movie, that's <laughs> crazy. Yeah. It's so not very long. <laughs> it's a, no. It's a pretty short process. Yeah. And, and the the story is very. Uh, I don't want to say by the numbers, but it gets in, it does what it wants to, and it gets out. You know, it's, yeah, a, it's, uh, it's a tight little thriller about a what we think is a home abduction. There's some twists and turns that come along sure with it. Is. And then we get some resolution and, and we go home. So uh, I thought this was a, a fun story. It is a remake. Uh, like you texted over to me from a, a Nordic film from a few years ago, which yeah. uh, I'm not usually a fan of taking a foreign film and adapting it for an English audience. But if it's one like this, where I don't think a lot of people knew about it, uh, it's much more okay. Like I'm not excited about Parasite getting remade and being in English because yeah. I thought that movie was really, really good as it was. And I agree. Let's read the subtitles, man. But um, for this one, I didn't even know that it was a remake before watching it. So same. I have to give it a pass <laughs> on that. Um, but I thought the story was fun. Uh, it, it was uh, like I said, it was nice and tight. There wasn't a lot of filler to it. Um, it did what it needed to. And it was really a showcase for, for Jake Gyllenhaal and his talents. So uh, diving into the, the performance side of it, uh, there were some some voices on the other end. Uh, Riley Keough, Ethan Hawke, Paul Dano, uh, and one of the 7,000 Scars guards that act in Hollywood lended their voice to this film. But really, uh, the only performance that you really get in this film is, is from uh, Jake Gyllenhaal himself. And man he's that man is talented <laughs> yeah you know and, and i was gonna say from the um from the uh the, the danish side of this movie uh you know it won um uh, best film best actor and best director in february of 2019 um you know wow, and, did it really yeah hmm. yeah so uh and i think before that it won top five foreign language films uh and you know best foreign language film no sorry it won best actor and blockbuster talent for some other award the bottle Bod bodil i don't hmm. know if i'm pronouncing it correctly but um uh, for the robert awards it won best film actor and director so uh, needless to say it obviously got a very good reception i think it was like 97 percent uh you know uh, approval rating so um on rotten tomatoes and 
Uh, I know the uh, average rating was a 7.94 out of 10. Uh, Is that know, for the, the international version or for the new one? Um, for the international one. Oh, okay. So interesting. You know, and the Metacritic uh, for the international was uh, 83. So hmm. I think interesting. You think about what we got from this uh, adaptation, this American adaptation, yeah. and kind of comparing it to those scores that uh, the the original uh, international film got. Uh, yeah, I, I would say for the sake of again, yeah, Jake Jake Joan Hall is. I, I feel like some people think he's underrated, and I think by this point in his career and his life, he's done so many films that it you know he he just delivers these performances that, you know, I think one of the ones he got, he got snubbed on was uh nightcrawler. Uh, Yo, nightcrawler is so good. It is an amazing Fuck, movie. Man. A lot of people did not watch it. They did not see it years ago when it came out in theaters. And I was blown away from, from that performance. Uh, I mean, yeah. An another one uh, where he, I, you can kind of see some of, some of his acting from, from this movie. Uh, um, oh God, I can't think of the name of it, but uh, he was, he was playing a cop. I think prisoners. Um, no, not prisoners. He was actually like a like a SWAT team member um, oh, in I LA. I want to say it's like end of line or end of days. Yeah, or something. yeah, something like that. But uh, and I now need to look it up. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, prisoners obviously great in that. Brothers uh, with uh, to Toby McGuire. Uh, end of end of watch is what it's end called. of watch. It's yes. him and Michael Pena, right? Yes, and Michael together, Pena. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I mean, he he delivered so many good parts. Uh, and you know, he, he definitely killed the acting in this movie. Uh, it's, it's kind of wild that he was Bubble Boy in like his first like big Hollywood thing, right? And now Bubble he's Boy. he's like this actor that or Darko like, widely sought. I had Donnie Darko too, right? Yeah, which Donnie is a cool classic. I have the the Arrow video 4K on my shelf over here. Um, nice, but I haven't even gotten the chance to watch it. But I heard it's it's really good. But um, but yeah, man, I I, I got a little bit nervous when I saw this because I was like, okay, he he's a cop in that end of watch movie he's in Zodiac. He's yeah. in uh, prisoners as a cop. Like, are, are we, are we typecasting Jake Gyllenhaal at this point? But um, this was very different. It almost didn't even feel like he was a police officer in this movie. Um, yeah. Obviously he's got a dark side to him. He's got some health issues where it feels like, I don't know if it's panic attacks or if it's like borderline heart attack. Cause he's, he's gripping his, his left arm very often in the film. Um, but all that stuff just made me like really on edge and nervous. And then when oh, you yeah. just like randomly blow up on his coworkers. I was like, I know we've all been there once in a while, but this, this guy is like blowing up on these people like three to four times a day. <laughs> so, yeah. It's, um, it's, he's like, he's like, yeah, you're definitely acting like an asshole. Yeah. And like just his, like his neck veins and the way his eyes and his head, just a lot of physical acting in a small space like that is, is really impressive stuff. And, uh, it was, it was really cool. I really dug uh, pretty much everything he brought to it. You could see the pain in his yeah. eyes and in his voice because he knew that he did something wrong in his past. Yeah. And he's trying to make amends for that. And he knows that he can't do anything past sit on the phone and talk to these people. And yep. his frustrations with like the California Highway Patrol and oh God, uh, yeah. the local police and all that, like he's just trying to get the job done and, and be a good person. Um, and eventually it breaks him where at the end he he confesses to uh, Emily that that he killed a man. Uh, that's the reason why he's been demoted. It turns out that the uh, the police have cooked up a story to to get him off scot free. And uh, by the end of the film, he he sees the light and he pleads guilty to everything and and does the right thing, which is uh, which is really fascinating. And uh, his character goes on a full journey and it's really all him. You know, like yeah. nobody else tells that story but Jake. His 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 tone, his dialect, his physical acting uh, is what gets this from A to B. And I really enjoyed it. I thought it was really cool. Yeah, uh, I, I think when we first saw the the initial trailer, I was intrigued. And of course, again, because I I really like uh, Jake Gyllenhaal as an actor. Uh, of course, I'm gonna I'm gonna see it. Uh, and sure. give it a chance for sure. Um, but it, I think it definitely, uh, it definitely met my expectations of whatever I had, and it maybe crossed that line a little bit more because of his performance. Yeah. Uh, and not only that, but uh, it, it's not just his him him being physical, but uh, you know the 
the nonverbal verbal parts like of him in the bathroom at the end you know i mean that was that was super intense and you know the blood and all that like yeah, yeah like you know he's in he clearly he's in rough shape and uh yeah, and he's not, dealing with dealing with it in the moment and the the reflections that come from his his voice um when he he's like you know i killed a man he goes a boy a boy he was 19 you know and um and, and i think just it's a simple plot too but just the way it's it's driven uh you know just the precedence of california fires and that taking away the availability of patrol cars and yep. enable um police and firefighters to to be like hey there's someone's abducted yep. you know and it's like as bad as that sounds coming through the radio like damn someone's been abducted like yeah but these these fires are ravaging you know the countryside mm -hmm. and that you know and and other people are in jeopardy right now yep. as well um we can't be everywhere and i mean kind of you start to kind of it's like the simple lines that get said, especially when, um, you know, Abby says something about Oliver and, and like, and I'm like, <sighs> blood knife. Yeah. Sleeping. He, he won't, he stopped crying. He's not crying anymore. Yep. And then snakes. I'm like, what is going on? <laughs> right. I'm like but, intestines yeah, or, the, or the what? fire stuff makes it all feel very real. Right. Because oh, yeah, because you can and then you could see it on the, the connected on monitors, the monitors. Right? Yeah. And that's so, stuff that for the last three or four years, that has real. been a big problem in California is wildfires yeah. and the smog, everything. You know, you, you've only got so many resources to try to help as many people. It, it makes the tension ratchet up even further. And uh, it gives Jake's performance even like a higher sense of urgency because of all that. So, yeah, uh, I I thought it was fantastic i really really dug it I, it even actually exceeded my expectations because i thought it was going to be kind of just like a paint by the numbers cop drama um yeah and then it ended up being something a little bit more than that which uh which i thought was was really cool um one one factoid that i thought was really interesting um like you mentioned during the filming that's only like 10 days or so um jake was basically on a set by himself and yes uh, antoine fuqua who is the director of this film Literally, like right before they started shooting, um, they found out that he was near someone that had tested positive for COVID. So they put him in a van, a van, yeah, with monitors and speakers and like a two way radio. <laughs> and he directed the film remotely from inside this van the entire time, which uh, it's just really crazy cool to see like the creativity and the ingenuity that, that they've gone into to be able to continue creating and to make art during a really difficult time is is really neat um it kind of reminds me of uh I, I didn't watch the film but they did another thing on netflix it was called malcolm and marie and it was john david washington and zendaya and oh yeah the whole movie is just the two of them in a house right so like this this difficult time that we're all going through could kind of be like a renaissance period for really low budget one cast two cast type things that just tell a good story and don't get caught up in like the pomp and circumstance of a CGI fest or whatever. So I, I think all that's really neat. Yeah. And I, I also have to say and give a shout out to uh, Riley Keough. Uh, her performance yeah, was, I was a, I mean, I was, I'll just say stellar because to deliver yeah. that all through voice and you, I mean, you, you could hear so much, uh, you know, emotion, the distress, the panic, the the sheer psychiatric um like dismemberment in her mind. And I mean you you felt for her and I mean I loved the twist. I'm like I'm like, damn, it's like that sucks. It's one of those, you know, it's and again, we we kind of get played and and at, we start to hear more of the dialogue about is it really what it seems? You know, is right. Henry like because you know, and they, they that's kind of the story they paint, like he's been to jail, he has, you know, he lost custody charges. You know, he it has to be him. It's assault. Like, you know, it's it's like, you know, he's got a he's got a dog on a chain in his house in his home. It's a mess, you know. Um, and it's yeah, right. It's gotta be him. Uh, but it's but it's not, it's not. you know, and and yeah. the way she you know, the way she delivers it, which uh Side note, fun fact. Did you know that her grandfather was Elvis Presley? I did not know that. That's yeah. Wild. Crazy. Crazy. <laughs> <What>? um, but, <laughs> but yeah. So 
Uh, her parents, no uh, Lisa Marie Presley, and uh, wow. father is the Keo from Danny, really? D- Danny Keo. So that's where her name gets changed. But Man, uh, that is so interesting. Yeah, interesting line- lineage there. <laughs> but um, I mean, yeah, she she absolutely killed it. And I think, yeah. you know, I I think just the chemistry that uh, Jake and Riley had uh, just over the phone. Uh, absolutely killed it and i kind of i wonder what the process was like for them as well yeah you i know, wonder i wonder if it was in, just like enacting that, in their, like, their closet like at home recording the lines right did like or did what, you know? right did riley was it like you know they kind of do scene by scene or did riley record her lines first for the scene and then jake responded to it or vice versa like i mean right. I, I think there's so many ways that they could have they could have played it out but sure. um i mean just just you feel you feel for Jake because you know you obviously know he's he's been in some shit, yeah. but he's oh, yeah. trying he's trying to make matters right and he's losing at the same time and and yes. it's like you're, you're cheering for him but you're just like bro calm down like just, <laughs> just just take a chill pill for a moment don't have a heart attack yeah don't die on us right now because that would be even more tragic because then who's so gonna funny. really care but yeah get yeah, patch it through patch it through you know and I'm like screaming. Yeah, he's again, uh, but I think Jake is just good in, in those moments. Like he, yeah. he definitely, he definitely delivers, you know, and hits the points of of, of acting and and, yeah. and making it seem like you've got issues, bro. It's funny because he's a cop and he plays like a very different cop than he plays in Prisoners. Because in Prisoners, oh yeah, he's like he's very mellow. He's to straight to the point. Let's yep. get the job done. Let's just go here and do what we need to do. And in this one, he's like almost like a, a lunatic when it comes to exactly yeah, that's the opposite. It, it shows a lot of range, which is cool. Um, yeah, it, yeah. Riley Kia, if you want to check out some of her other stuff, um, she's in The Devil All the Time, which is also on Netflix, which is an excellent movie. It also has Robert Pattinson and Tom Holland in it, and they're all yep. fantastic. Um, she was in a movie called Zola this year that A twenty four put out, uh, which is a story that came from a Twitter thread about a wild trip to Florida. And bro, when I say batshit, this movie's crazy. It's insane. (laughs) If you haven't seen it, I uh, haven't, I think you can get it on iTunes now. Like you can rent it or whatever. Okay. Uh, It might be on Blu-ray too. It's a, it's certainly a trip. It's an A24 movie. So, you know, you know what you're getting when you, when you get those guys, but, um, but yeah, I, overall just a very, very fun movie. uh, Worth, you know, sitting down and just taking in the 90 minutes. I, by the time it started, it was almost over already. And I was like, man, I, I love when movies do that because <laughs> it's like, it leaves me wanting more, you know? And I think that's a, I'd rather have that than something that's overstuffed and fills in a bunch of stuff that doesn't need to be there. So uh, bravo to everybody involved. Uh, I would yes. give this movie like a solid eight. I think it's definitely worth watching. If, if you have a Netflix agree. subscription, you're not, shelling out any extra money to go see it in a theater or anything so uh worth worth the time eight for me what about you yeah I, i'm gonna i'm gonna agree i'm gonna say it's an eight um you know i it's like that that metacritic score is about 83 the rotten tomatoes is 7.94 for the original okay so i i think this definitely hits on the same uh the same degrees um you know with, within that range for for, for for sure definitely worth watching yeah. uh, i'm gonna recommend it to people um you know it actually gave uh, my girlfriend um uh, so, uh a nightmare um, oh wow some anxiety of, there. of, okay. of uh, being abducted um without yeah. even seeing it on screen isn't that wild like yeah just what and sound can I, I guess it's just the the just the delivery again from uh from jake from riley just the uh, the dialogue the the moments of, of direction um so uh and i know we didn't get a lot of ethan hawk but i think the parts that we did were were still impactful yeah um as uh, uh bill uh well, Saj. we're gonna get plenty of him in the next couple months that's uh, true yeah, yeah yeah he's in scott derrickson's new horror film the black phone uh he's also one of the mm. villains in the moon knight series so yes uh, the ethan hawk renaissance is is upon us we're, we're coming back a whole bunch of him so um yep. one other thing uh, i know i already gave my review but i completely spaced on this and forgot uh there's a bunch of cool shots in this where oh god there uh, is, yeah. jake is having dialogue with somebody on the phone and the way they rack focus is when he's talking the focus is on his nose and lips and then when he stops and somebody else starts the focus racks to his earpiece 
yeah. like the earpiece is what's actually talking in the scene. Uh, I thought that was a super cool, like visual way to frame the conversation um, between him and a character that you don't actually see. So yeah, uh, um, really, really good stuff. I think the last thing I, I want to say is uh, the very end. Uh, I just how it, it you know it wraps up with just the anchors that are basically telling telling the story how it ends yeah, his, his yeah. day in court and yep. you look at it like the man's got court and he's clearly up past 6 a.m oh yeah he's not in a good place <laughs> you know and i'm like this guy's gonna be an absolute wreck like he just yep. puked a bunch in the bathroom at the station you know so even if he goes home and showers he's just gonna look extremely and overly fatigued and then he has to go in and you know, again maybe just him telling the truth might make him feel better uh consciously but yeah, physically yeah. he's gonna just look the part as well of, of being guilty and um you know of course i want to see like how the how the court i want to see all this, all this extra stuff and, and and granted we don't need to see it but it's just i think that's when you when you get a good story and you want to see more about it but you don't you don't necessarily need it yeah yeah it leaves you wanting more which is which is yeah. always good i'd rather be left wanting more than sitting there bored looking at my watch going all right what is this gonna be over yeah i agree so, so. Cool, man. Yeah, overall worthwhile. Definitely gets a recommendation from us. Uh, that's going to wrap it up for this video. Uh, if you guys have seen this film already, uh, we'd love for you to drop us a comment. Let us know what you thought about it. Uh, what were your thoughts on Jake Gyllenhaal's performance? Do you think he's been typecast as a police officer? All of those thoughts are valid. Drop us a comment. We'll respond to every single one. Uh, if you want to support the channel, all you have to do is like this video. Subscribe if you haven't already. We are really chugging along towards our goal of 500. You guys have been doing an amazing job, uh, but we still need some extra help getting there. So if you're not subscribed already, click subscribe and you will get more than your fill of movie TV and Blu-ray reviews. Uh, you can check us out on social media. We're on Twitter and Instagram at Real Heroes Show. Uh, we are going to have a review of Ted Lasso's season finale tomorrow. It's exciting and sad all at the same time. And, uh, uh, we're also going to live stream on Monday to talk about the entire season. Uh, we'll have reviews for foundation. Uh, God, we're in a Marvel lull, but Oof. I still want to do some more. What if videos? I think I'll, Nick, <laughs> I'm telling you this on the air to tease the audience. I want to do a video where we pitch our own what if ideas and come up with the craziest shit we can. I think that'd be a lot of fun. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, so maybe we'll do that on Wednesday in lieu of not having a what if episode there, there wasn't a 10th, like there was supposed to be, we'll make our own 10th episode. Yeah. Damn it. <laughs> um, and then what no time to die is out this weekend too. So uh, we're going to have to check that out and, uh, and share our thoughts on that. So please yes. make sure to stay tuned for all of those things. And so, so, so much more until next time. See you guys in the next video. Peace. Thank you.